In this video, we will understand request parameters and how to use them in a Spring Boot application with hands-on example. If you go to google.com and do a simple search, look at the URL. Let's copy it. This is the URL that was created by Google. Now, look at the highlighted portions. These are called request parameters and are sent after the main URL or the URL, which points to a resource on the server. For this URL, the main URL is slash search. If you have watched the previous videos where we created a Spring Boot REST application and exposed URLs from Spring controllers, then you know that the URL till slash users represents a controller method, which handles this URL. If you did not watch it, then here is the controller method for your reference. Now, this portion of URL is called a request parameter. A URL can have multiple request parameters, with the first parameter added using a question mark after the main URL and other parameters separated using an AND or ampersand symbol. So, request parameters are in key value format with key and value separated by an equal to sign. Request parameters are used to pass information from client to server and we will see how. The controller method mapped with this URL returns a list of two users as we just saw. Now let's say we want to fetch a user with some ID. One way of doing this is by passing the ID after the URL. This is called path variable and we have seen that in the last video. Link is displayed above. Second way is to supply the ID as a request parameter like this where ID is the parameter name and 1 is its value. To get request parameter in a spring controller method that handles this URL, we need to add a parameter and request param annotation over that parameter, followed by the name of request parameter in parenthesis. Name of the request parameter corresponds to the name by which the URL is accessed. Now let's implement a controller method which receives request parameter. This method shall receive ID of the request parameter and return a user with that ID. Let's write a method that returns a single user. Return type of this method will be a user object and it will accept an integer argument to hold the ID of required user. We created user class in earlier videos, but here is this class for reference. It has three fields ID, name, and age and their getter and setter methods. To create a list of two users, we can call this method internally, since it defines a list and adds two users. Next, to get a user with matching ID, we need to iterate over this list using a for loop. Data type of loop variable will be a user object. Compare the ID of this object with the ID we are looking for. If they match, return this user object. Now, write the URL mapping for this method. It will be a get mapping that handles URL slash user. To support request parameters, we need to add request param annotation over the method argument, as we saw earlier. To receive the value of a particular request parameter, a name should be supplied. This name should match with name of request parameter. This argument will automatically be populated with the value of request parameter, user ID. Start the application. Go to the browser and hit URL, user and add request parameter user ID with value as 1. Look, we get a user with ID 1. Value of request parameter should be of the same data type as the corresponding controller method argument or should be convertible to it. For example, this is an integer. So, request parameter should be an integer if it is of some other type, such as a string. We get a bad request. And if we look at the Spring Boot application, we get an exception. Look. Method argument type mismatch exception, and the message is, failed to convert the value of type string to integer. By default, if a method argument has request param annotation, then it must be sent in the request URL. If it is not, then there is an error. Remove this parameter. Look. We have a bad request. And an error at the back end which says, required parameter is not present. To make the request parameter optional, provide a required attribute with request param and set it to false. With this change, we need to provide the name of request parameter using name attribute. 
Now, this will work. But, when request parameter is not sent in the URL, this method parameter will be set to null. So, we will be getting a null pointer exception here. Let's check for null value. And return an empty user. Restart the application. Remove the request parameter. It works, and we get a user, whose fields are set to default values. We can have, as many parameters, in the request URL. For each parameter, we need to add an argument, in the controller method, with request param annotation, as shown here. That concludes the video. Thanks for watching.